Hey guys, welcome to another segment of the 101, just in time for Halloween. Today I would like to discuss a pulp writer by the name of H.P. Lovecraft. Who is H.P. Lovecraft? Well, H.P. Lovecraft was a horror writer from the 1920s to the 1930s, rough. He wrote in that era, time, era, time era, and he wrote for Strange Tales magazine, uh, around the same time as Robert E. Howard, they were friends, and Robert E. Howard wrote Conan. So this is some old school pulp horror writing. So why would I bring up H.P. Lovecraft? Well, H.P. Lovecraft invented the Cthulhu mythos. So, if, and it is something that is still around today. The, his influences have made, main, they're in mainstream, they've influenced authors from Stephen King to Robert Block, there are hundreds of toys and games and clothing. It's a whole big thing. So very, very popular horror genre. So what exactly did his writing encompass? Once again, it's pulp writing. Uh, and it takes place during the 1920s and the 1930s. So some of the stories are a little, the writing's a little off, a little long-winded. But the payoff is really good. Uh, they're mostly short stories, some of them longer than others. Uh, I think some of them may be public domain if you ever wanted to read them. What the focus of H.P. Lovecraft is, what his, his claim to fame sort of is, is things lurking in the dark. It's, it's his, his mythos, his creatures, his creations. It's always about creatures just right outside reality. The things that do go bump in the night or things from another time and space. That's generally where his his ideas are, where they come from. Those are the, the, the monsters. Uh, the Cthulhu Mythos is a group of those creatures and monsters where there's a whole bunch of them and, and what they want to do is be summoned into our reality and basically destroy the world. That That's kind of the, the feel of, of his writing. Um, Hellboy is a perfect example if you've read the early Hellboy. That stuff, very Cthulhu-ish. Things outside our world just waiting to come in. And that's the creepiness of it. That's, that's what makes these stories very appealing, is you sit there and you go kind of, what if? Um, what if the focuses of H.P. Lovecraft's writings are, you know, like, mad, is, is the journey to, to either let these things out or the discovering that we are not alone? A very X-Files-ish. And there's always someone or something lurking in the background. So what his kind of, his... Um, how would you say it? His themes, for example, a lot of them would, as I stated, things just kind of lurking right outside our reality. Uh, forbidden knowledge is, is a big theme in Lovecraft's writing. So people searching for hidden tombs or searching for, they find a statue or something that in turn leads to this series of events that go horribly wrong. Uh, insanity is a very, very common theme in Cthulhu. Uh, mythos type stuff. What uh, that you know, people that discover this stuff, you're not meant to see these things. These creatures that are just so horrific that they you just slowly go insane from just seeing these things, or from just discovering these things exist. It's more than the human mind can comprehend. Very common theme in the Cthulhu stuff, or the people trying to stop these cults or these bad guys from bringing the stuff into our world and what they have to do to stop these things, whether it's find these statues or find these creatures or uh, find these tombs or tomes or, or hidden writings. You know, not supposed to know these things exist. So as they travel down this path to stop these things, they're being exposed to it and slowly go insane. So that is really a common theme uh, of his writing. Uh, once again, very creepy, very just outer-worldly, very things that go bump in the night and and just a lot of fun and heavily influenced today um, the mythology of his stuff basically covers Cthulhu which is a big squid like uh, Godzilla ish type creature that's part elephant part squid giant wings uh, lives under the sea and is just waiting to be released to basically devour the world there are other characters um, along those lines. There's Cthulhu, which is like the main god. And then there's other smaller gods. There's one uh, called Yogg-Sogoth, 
which is another one. It always has weird names for these things. But once again, think of these giant, larger-than-life beings that just want to come in and just take over. Another theme of his are uh, cults and crossbreeders. So you have these creatures that have intermingled with these monsters and these hidden cults, and they just kind of blend into humanity, and then they're off doing whatever things they're doing to summon these creatures back into the world or spread their contagion. That's another common theme. Those are really creepy too, because these are just people that just are screwing with stuff and are just secretly, they're, they're around, they're, they could be your neighbor, and then the next thing you know, they're summoning things in their basement or have these ancient tomes or, or books. That's another huge theme of his stuff. Very, very cool stuff. Um, another theme would be artifacts. You know, someone discovers a statue or discovers writings that leads to something which leads to something which leads to something bad, uh, some sort of summoning or the discovery of these cults or these creatures, very common in his writing. Uh, these all kind of tie together. I know it sounds a little bit repetitive, but that they are very common themes and sometimes they're interwoven in the story. So the cult which leads to um, letting loose one of these creatures, that's kind of how that works. Uh, some of the places that you may hear of in some of his themes, uh, once again, like I said, his influences are still felt today. Arkham. Arkham is H.P. Lovecraft. Arkham Asylum. Batman. You know, the reference. It's, it's a place where all kinds of crazy things happen. Living in Arkham is bad. Bad things happen in Arkham. So that's kind of a, a, a influence on Batman. You kind of got the Gotham and the Arkham Asylum kind of thing. Uh, the Necronomicon. Necronomicon was created by H.P. Lovecraft. That was his. Tons of authors, tons of movies have taken that idea. But that book, that idea, was it started with H.P. Lovecraft. He invented this book of all these rituals to summon creatures. Started with his stuff, and people have taken that and expanded on it. Miskato Miskatonic University. Uh, that's something that you'll see a lot in H.P. Lovecraft, too. Uh, I think there there may be some references in some of other other comic books and stories. What it is this is a, a university that houses these relics or houses uh, the research to find uh, these these creatures or whatever. Like I said, I think that's been mentioned and stuff. I'm sure it's been used in something like the X Files. Uh, picture Indiana Jones at the very end where they hide everything in the in the warehouse. It's a university that houses all that stuff. So. That's Miskatonic University. If you ever hear that, that's a big theme in his books. And like I said, that's been used in other books and other references too. Uh, some stories from H.P. Lovecraft. These are my favorites that I could recommend. I think, like I said, a lot of this stuff is public domain, so you may be able just to download them. They're all at the library. You can always find compilations of this stuff. Some of my favorites are Rats in the Wall, uh, Shadow over Innsmouth, uh, Dreams in the Witch House, Pickman's Model, Call of Cthulhu, and the strange case of Charles Dexter Ward. Once again, I'm just throwing some things out there. If you want to get a reference, just download them on an iPad or something. They're not that expensive. Some of them may even be free. I know they're on audio books for free. You can get them if you want to listen to them. Real good stories, real creepy. Uh, once again, it may take a little while to get used to the writing style because they're a little dated, but the payoff at the end of these stories is just awesome. They're excellent. Uh, some of the movies that have been based on H.P. Lovecraft's writings uh, or adaptations. One of my favorites, John Carpenter, In the Mouth of Madness. Great. Completely H.P. Lovecraft. Uh, Leviathan is another one. Reanimator. Reanimator is actually based on a short story by H.P. Lovecraft. So that is actually taken from one of his stories. Um, from Beyond is another one. It's a sci-fi, outer world kind of thing. Uh, creatures from another place. That's uh, very influenced. I think that may actually be from one of his, but I'm not sure exactly what the adaptation was. Uh, Dreams in the Witch House is an actual short story, an adaptation uh, by, I think it was the uh, Masters of Horror. Uh, John Carpenter may have actually done that one, which is an actual adaption of the story. And there's a weird creature and a cult in that one. Pretty cool. And then there's a one called Dagon, which is actually an adaptation of one of his actual stories. 
influence in comic books too. Uh, once again, this stuff's still around. This man has influenced, like I said, Stephen King, Robert Block, uh, Gilmore de Toro, H.R. Uh, Geiger. Lot, all his ideas are still felt today. Uh, in comic books, you could look at that in Hellboy. Early Hellboy, Mike Magola, big fan. His stuff, uh, those creatures that are hovering in the movie, that, that is complete Cthulhu mythos. Uh, some of the cults that you see in his, his books, straight out of H.P. Lovecraft. Uh, Swamp Thing, early Swamp Thing with uh, Bernie Reiston. Very, that, that feel, that creepiness. Um, Constantine, that feeling when you read those books and all these strange going-ons and, and, and these layers of, of just oddness and weirdness and darkness, that's H.P. Lovecraft. That's his influence. That's where this stuff really kind of took shape and influence. Um, Batman, some of the Batman stuff. If you Arkham, Arkham, Horror, Arkham Asylum, some of the weirdness that goes on in that, and just that darkness, and the, and and when you see the asylum, and, and you know just the, the look of that Arkham stuff, that's H.P. Lovecraft. That that's taken from his influences, his writings. Uh, a lot of the stuff that's out for for Cthulhu. I mean, there are a ton of games and products. There's um, Elder Sign, which is a game by Fantasy Flight, where you're actually trying to stop these creatures from coming into the world. It's a game. Uh, Arkham Horror is another board game where you're playing one of these investigators, trying not to go mad as you discover these things exist and stop these creatures coming into the world. That is the theme of the game. Uh, there are action figures. Uh, actually, here's something that I brought in from my collection. There are plushies. The embodiment. This is Cthulhu. The embodiment of all things evil in a plush doll. Can't go wrong with that. So you have that. There are role-playing games with these with this theme. Um, magazines have featured H.P. Lovecraft. So this stuff is not dead. This stuff is still alive and well, and there's more and more of it. Uh, going around, and there are other authors who have taken his ideas and done their own mythos, their own stories based on his writings. If you go to any bookstore, you'll just see the uh, the, the Cthulhu Cycle or Nameless Cults or just some other books that just completely different authors have taken his ideas and expanded on them and made made new parts of that storyline. So it's really really cool stuff, really dark, really creepy. Uh, a quick read. On, on, a, on an evening. So that's pretty much it. Like I said, alive and well, just in time for Halloween. So if, you got, if you're looking for something to do, something fun to read, just look up some HP Lovecraft, sit down, and enjoy it. If you have any questions, feel free to get in contact with me. I'll be sure to ex help with anything I know about the subject. Um, I can be reached at Carrie at comicsremix.com for all your other comic book needs comicsremix.com I hope you have enjoyed kind of an introduction to H.P. Lovecraft at some point I will cover some other pulp writers but I thought this was appropriate in time for Halloween and if you have an interest just look around next time you go to a comic book store next time you go to a game store you'll see this stuff it's, it's all around if you were unaware of it and this is where it all started so once again my name's Carrie. This is the 101. Stay geeky, my friends.